Hello and welcome back to Talking Walls for a special video and podcast today. My name is Dave. Alongside me today, we've got my co-host, Matt. How are you keeping, Matt? Yeah, very well. Thanks, Matt. I'm looking forward to this. No problem. And alongside us today, we have got a player that made 206 appearances for Wolves, scoring 15 goals, Mr. Romain Saiz. Romain, how are you? I'm good, and you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, man. We're really excited to, to have you on the Thanks. channel. Um, let's start off, obviously, your move this summer to Besiktas. How has it started so far in Turkey? Uh, it's good. Uh, of course, it's a bit different from UK. Yeah. Uh, in terms of everything, life, uh, football, everything is totally different. But uh, mm. now, after a couple of months uh, in Turkey, I feel I feel good. I feel okay. Uh, I have now, of course, my routines every day. Yeah. My family as well. So that's the most uh, important for for me because mm. it's a new life after six years in in England. So it was not easy to to change. But uh, now I, I, we are feeling okay in the in, in Turkey. Good. What's the weather like? Is it better than the UK or about the same? Oh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> <Much better. laughs> so good. <laughs> no, it's different, of course. You have yeah. more more sunshine. Yeah. Uh, at least here, for the winter it's cold apparently, but mm. at least you have real four seasons. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. good. So in UK, you never know. Which month is it? Because the weather changes every time, every day. So, yeah. But uh, no, it's different. But I enjoyed my six years in in, in England as well. Yeah, no problem. And before we move on to Wolves, uh, the World Cup coming up. And Morocco there at the World Cup. Are you going to uh, hopefully be in the squad for for that tournament? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Be there. Uh, so... Be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, I'm looking forward because uh, to I think as a football player, the big tournament you can play. Because obviously mm -hmm. you play for your your country, yeah. Uh, so it's the the best tournament. So I'm looking forward to to play that one. Uh, it's going to be my second one. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe the last one because in four years <laughs> we don't know. Be more <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. more difficult. But uh, yeah, of course, um, it's coming soon in one mm -hmm. month. Yeah. Uh, but we have. Uh, Still, some work to do with uh, with our club before to to join the the squad. So it's going to be different because also is in is yeah. in November. So mm -hmm. it's totally different uh, when you play in summer. So it's going to be a strange one, but uh, in interesting. Yeah, for sure. We'll move on to Wolves now. Remain. You were one of the sort of early signings from when Wolves had the takeover from Foson mm. back in 2016, and. I think a lot of people probably don't realise how long you were actually at the club because probably alongside Connor Cody, you were one of the longest standing members in the in the for the for Wolves last year. Um, it took you a little while to sort of break fully into the team, but you joined the team with Walter Zenger as the head coach at the time. What, what were your thoughts on uh, Walter? Because he didn't last very long at Wolves, but what was your experience like with him? Uh... I think it was um, it was difficult for for him as a new mm -hmm. coach uh, because I think the problem also it's uh, when uh, Fosun bought the club I think they were in the rush yeah. after that uh, for the transfer window uh, to bring the re the player they want to find the right one in short time I think it was difficult. So after also it's up to manager to 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 manage with all these players because it's uh, it was hard we were so many players so you yeah. cannot change everything in in one or or two months uh, I think it's gonna be yeah it's gonna it, it was a, a difficult season yeah uh, not even uh, with him but after with with Paul Lambert so it was it was really difficult uh because uh as everyone knows when you prepare the new season you need a lot of time to work on the player you want to bring uh maybe i don't know i don't know if it was the f the first choice as a coach as well because you have to go quick when you have only yeah. uh six weeks before the the start of the season uh me i remember when i signed it was the end of august 
so Correct. I came late. So, mm-hmm. so all these small things, I think, uh, uh, were not good and were not an help for anyone uh, this season. And that's why after when Nuno came, he came really soon. Uh, yeah. They can they brought the player they he wants and built something with uh, um, with him and around him and and this stuff. Mm. Romain, you, you talk about um, Wolves kind of rushing the signings once Foson had taken over. Was the was signing for Wolves something that happened quite quickly, or or were Wolves interested in you for some time? Uh, it happened quickly. Yeah, between the first talk and uh, when I signed, but uh, as I said, they came very late in the in the transfer window, so I had more discussion before with some clubs uh, and after wars came yeah in in august so it takes like three three weeks to to be done um but of, of course uh, they came late because i think frozen signed beginning of the uh transfer window i think so yeah and uh, so they have to um, find the right coach first <laughs> and then try to to bring the the player they want so that's why uh, i signed really really late in the transfer window yeah you, you mentioned there about about paul lambert <laughs> i think when, when he was in charge a lot of wolves fans were asking why weren't you in the team um what was your relationship like with paul lambert i, I gather from stuff you said in the media that it, it wasn't quite the best no because uh you know i'm this kind of uh, uh, people like uh, you cannot be the best in your in your job. I cannot be the the best maybe in 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 my job. Otherwise, I will be playing maybe for Real Madrid or Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which yeah. club. You know what I mean. But I think uh, everyone can be a a good person. You know, have yeah. honesty. Uh, say the things when you have to to tell to someone and that's why it, uh, i was a bit uh, fed up with him because uh, he was not honest with with me so after he can do his choice uh, he can think uh, this player or this player was the best choice but you have to when i ask you why you have to give me the right answer so don't lie to me and uh, give me some bullshit just uh, if I, you know, like, uh, okay, leave me alone. And like, if I'm a kid of 18 years old, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can have your choice saying like, for me, that's my choice. Uh, because I think this guy is better than you, what you want, you know? And after it's okay, it's up to me to, to walk. But when you stay, uh, uh, I remember I was away uh, for African Cup at that time. And um, I lost you. <laughs> oh, uh, I, saw you. I was on. at the yeah. I was at the African Cup at that time. I remember. And I think we lost. I don't know. Maybe seven, eight games in a row, something like that. We only won in in the in the FA Cup. And even after when I came back, I spent I don't know how many games on the bench uh, without playing not even coming inside for for a few minutes so i was surprised so so after when i spoke with him about the situation and he gave me ex- this explanation i said okay we're not gonna talk anymore <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard Romain before before the african cup of nations there was a run of games even before you left where he didn't play you because he wanted almost the team to get used to it without the team to get used to playing without you. Do you, is that a rubbish excuse? Was that a rubbish excuse as well? Is that something that he mentioned to you or? Yeah. Yeah. He told me like, uh, I think it was the, for the boxing day or just the game after he mm-hmm. put me out of the team and just told me, uh, I want to be focused on the team who's going to play the, the next few games without yeah. you so and even for you it's better if you can go now and join your national team i said mm-hmm. okay 
mm. no problem so yeah i didn't uh, think about it because i was focused on what's coming with my my country uh yeah. but uh, it was good also for me that time to go in national team because it was a mm. uh, not a good moment for me at Wolves, especially for the first season so it was good for me to go to go away was so, uh, were you sighted and saying something in the in the press reminding about um about him asking you to run and you only want to running he was asking players to run for the sake of it is that true something like that uh, sorry I, I think um, I read something that someone had said that um, you don't. You, you said under Paul Lambert you didn't mind running, but Paul Lambert wanted players to run for the sake of it. Is that something that you said? <laughs> wow. No, no, no. But it's just um, so I he said something in the press because I remember um, someone uh, the uh, one journalist asking asking mm -hmm. him why i was not playing more and i was staying on the bench it was not even coming inside and he just said like uh, he has to fight for his place because the players play in that position in his position they are good at that in that moment and i said okay i can understand if you are you won maybe six five five six game in the row i can understand when but when you lose you are losing six seven eight games in a row you might be changed something at that at yeah. one point so you have time to change maybe one time the the striker one defender or midfielder and they give the opportunity to to everyone so i said okay and uh, when the end of the season has come came i said if we stay next season for sure i'm not gonna stay no yeah. chance i'm gonna play for this guy one more season mm. and just because all, i can i can i can discuss about this about his choice yeah but after it's football you know everyone yeah. has his main opinion so it's like that but one one more time about uh, honesty and being honest with me yeah of course no. that's all you want yeah you know, the, the, the funny thing was at the time the cent like he said there was better players matt the central midfielders at the club at the time with Dave Edwards, Prince on the Ange, uh, George, uh, yeah, George Savile. Savile <laughs> you know, there, there weren't many, in my opinion, Romain was much better than a lot of those players in terms of quality. So I, I don't know what Paul Lambert was talking about, really. Um, I don't know. Well, he gave um, me, he gave me shit excuses at the end of yeah. the season. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, really shit. Oh. Love I it. suppose I suppose you were glad then when Nuno came and, and like you said earlier with Nuno he had a lot of time to prepare that was something that got sorted quite quickly and he was able to bring some very good players to the team mm. especially in the championship and and you played mm. a lot of the season alongside Ruben Neves in the midfield is that a role you preferred in the midfield or did you did you like it better in defense or uh, uh, do you just play you know you're happy to play wherever no I am uh, I enjoyed both both position mm. I mm -hmm. think I did my time as a as a midfielder, and mm -hmm. I am enjoying I'm enjoying playing centre back. Uh, but yeah, of course, was a, a good season. I really enjoy playing with with Ruben, yeah. um, because I think uh, our partnership was good uh, because we we can complete the 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 difference between each other. Yeah. For the balance for for the team and for and for the midfield so i really enjoyed this season alongside him uh first of all because he's a nice guy so it's easier yeah. to play with someone you like next to you than someone you don't like <laughs> so <laughs> no it was, it was good and the first uh, first session i really feel something different uh with nuno and with uh, his staff uh he he put straight as um his identity what he wants for for the the team and for the club also so it was really important and uh all the player really enjoy that time when he came because it was totally different uh of course he had to make some some choice because a lot of new player uh, joined the club 
but uh, I think it was uh, an important step for for the club also. Mm. Obviously, we had such a strong squad and a strong team that season. At what point in that season, or, or is there a particular moment or match that you remember where at the end of that match you thought, yeah, this team, we're going to be playing in the Premier League next season? Was there a particular moment where you thought Wolves were going to get promoted? Well, I think it was more or less uh, all the game because um, we did an amazing season. It doesn't yeah. matter the opponent, uh, doesn't matter how many players were on the pitch. Uh, we just trust uh, the the coach, the staff, and uh, all the the advice they give to us uh, yeah. on and outside the pitch. And uh, you feel confident as soon as you you we start the the new season. I think a lot of people were thinking they brought a lot of player from abroad. Uh, can yeah. they have that to the championship? And after a few games, I think everyone take more confidence, and uh, it was a huge, a huge strength for for us. That mentality uh, inside the team, inside the play, uh, the players as well. Because as we said, uh, it was a, a a dream to 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 share the dressing room with all the this guy. And uh, when you are good outside, obviously it's. It's easier to to play on side on the pitch, uh, and we feel more confident game after game, yeah. and obviously after the some big games when we beat like uh, Cardiff, mm -hmm. uh, Borough, Bristol, this kind yeah. of game, they give you something like okay, it's it's our season this season, no one can stop us, and we're gonna we're just gonna do it. Oh, that Borough game is one that. Is one that I, I, I remain, remember you most fondly for, Romain. That iconic picture of you just lay yeah. down on the turf. <laughs> how, how, did you sleep well that night after that game? Yeah, yeah of course I slept. Uh, I think I almost slept for three days after. <laughs> <laughs> I was so I was so really tired uh, because of the game, of course, because we play with nine uh, nine players, so you almost play in two positions. All the time, mm -hmm. and because I had the uh, hard uh, hard week in national team, being sick with uh, forty degrees of fever, uh, so it was it was really tough, and I was not supposed to to play the full game because uh, because of the fatigue and everything. That the problem is after two red cards, I have. <laughs> you have to stay. <laughs> was, I tried to watch the the coach at the from the bench, but uh, the, there is no no more choice. So it was really hard to finish the game. But uh, when the win is at the end, is is okay. You recover a bit better after. Yeah. I suppose it didn't help as well that game. You had Adama Traore running at you as well, didn't you? Because he was uh, he was at Middlesbrough then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We know we did some some video on him. And and we are like, oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to take the ball from from the, the his box and they're just running to the other one. So yeah. we know it was the uh, their main player, I think, with mm -hmm. uh, uh, was playing striker, but I think Bamford. it was Bamford. Yeah, yeah Bamford. Yeah. Um, so we know it will be hard to defend and uh, on Adama and we try to to block him by uh, sending all the time two players <laughs> minimum <laughs> and try to stop him even if you have to do a small foul but small we did well foul, because yeah. yeah small but it's small hard to foul. do small foul on, on small him. Bar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it's hard to do small foul on, on Adama <laughs> because it's going too quick uh, but I think we did we did well because we won the we won the game uh, even with two with two two players less so it was it was good hard but mm -hmm. but good at the end yeah. another game you mentioned was the the Cardiff match Romain which was obviously yeah. Wolves fans you know loved that game as well and obviously Ruben scored and then two penalties missed one was saved by John Ruddy um what was your memories of that match because obviously Neil Warnock the Cardiff manager came on at the end 
Um, mm. uh, football fans always talk about that, how we had a massive argument with Nuno. Did you know much about that at the time or was it just after the game that you had saw what had happened? Yeah, more after the game because uh, us were celebrating on the pitch, yeah. the win. Uh, but we saw it yeah, after, uh, after the game. So what's going on? What did that, why he doesn't want to, to change the new there? <laughs> So uh, after you know it's football, but it's okay. But uh, yeah, that game was uh, it was amazing. The last ten minutes, <laughs> yeah, because um, the rest of the game was uh, a really fight. This game, mm -hmm. we knew it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. We're not gonna get a lot of opportunity to score. Uh, fortunately, we score uh, with Ruben and an yeah. amazing free kick, and we just try to to stay solid after that and try to to find the the solution to score the second. And when we concede the two penalty, I said, yeah. "Oh my god!" I said, "Today is not our day." <laughs> Possible. <laughs> they want they 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 missed one penalty, and I think in. Well, two minutes after, yeah. it was when it's when like Ca Cavalero slipped and uh, fouled yeah, the player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the second one, I said, "Oh my God, it's not possible. Yeah, we cannot win this game." And yeah. fortunately, they missed the the penalty. So, yeah, it just the the feeling was because yeah. we are so we are thinking about the end of the game because we are winning one nil, and everyone was was. Um, was uh, ready to to fight for the last five minutes to keep the score, and uh, we know we can. Um, we we I think we we put after that like six points, nine points, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Different, something know. like that. So it was yeah. important to win, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just an up and down of emotion, you know. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you can lose the game also, you know. And mm. when the whistle was just the uh... thank <laughs> so you, really... <laughs> was... yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. So, so I think we we had a bit of luck also <laughs> no, <laughs> because we... John saved the first one and then uh, they missed the second one. So yeah, it was just our day. It was just no. our day and our season. So. Sometimes you need look though to to win trophies and get promotion and oh, and that's yeah, what we did. Um, and then the next year in the Premier League, so the year after you you didn't actually play as much in all competitions as 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 the other seasons. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously Jean Martino was brought in as well, so he was gonna occupy almost that midfield role. Did you know at the start of that season that maybe you were gonna get less game time, or or were you happy with the amount of game time that you got, or do you think you should have played a bit more? Mm -hmm. No, I was. Uh, it was uh, the end of the season was really hard for me because I played the World Cup straight after. Yeah. So you know, championship is really tough with mm. many games, and I think I played um, sixty games all the season. Yeah. Uh, so club and national team. So I was really, really tired at that time uh, when I start the preseason. Uh, uh was not ready to to start honestly also i yeah. had uh, like um only two weeks of holidays so mm. it's hard to not a lot yeah to yeah it's not a lot and to cut for two weeks and uh, don't it's like if you don't stop honestly <laughs> yeah so uh, when i start uh, my body still still tired and after the the season start and the the team was doing was doing well at that time also so uh i know uh i would need time to to come back in the team but i was expecting maybe to to have more minutes maybe come inside as a sub yeah uh, unfortunately uh, it came really late uh, and then of course i was not happy because i was not playing Mm -hmm. uh, but I just take my my time and uh, keep working until I I've got my first chance to uh, to 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 came on and show what can I do in the, in that level. But of course, it was was not an easy an easy moment, easy situation. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, but you have to to learn about it and take the best of the situation to to fight to come back. Huh? Yeah, and, and obviously it was a great season for Wolves. Nobody expected it. I mean, we finished seventh. We did get into the FA Cup semi-final, which was obviously, as you know, a huge disappointment. How, yeah. What do you think went wrong on that day? I mean, we all started off so well. We scored two goals. Do you think it was the substitutions? Do you think it was just, you know, everyone was a little bit too excited? What, what do you think happened at Wembley on that day? No, I think we we did well until they, until they scored the, the first goal. Mm. Uh, and since we conceded the the goal we concede the goal i think we lost our confidence on the pitch yeah. it looks like because uh we st- we are still winning 2-1 so mm-hmm. it's okay they have to yeah. keep pushing and instead of uh being more in control of the uh, of the game as we uh, we we did uh, in the league for example uh we just um uh, not refuse to to compete because it's not true but we just be more careful staying more down yeah. and just try to, to keep the score and don't mm. uh, concede any goal you know uh we play with a low low block and uh of course we know they they will put more put more ball in the in our box yeah, they they stress they stress us with a, a lot of long ball, this kind of thing, and we just stepping back too too much, and then after it happened what what happened, unfortunately, yeah. and uh, yes, since the first the first game the first goal, sorry, I think after we we didn't control the game and manage the game as we we have to, and fortunately we lost the. The, the the game because I think we did uh, before the goal we did the perfect game scoring two goals uh, we were we are quite strong uh, in the game and we just play our game as in the in the league and I think we we feel like not like pressure but like you know the game is different it's not a league, league game is if you lost it's it's over so. Yeah. You have the pressure of the result, and sometimes it's different when uh, for a new new team in Premier League. And uh, I think Wolves didn't go in semi final for a long time. Yeah, it was correct. different yeah, for long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, the FA Cup is is a huge uh, tournament in in UK, also uh, playing in Wembley. So all these these things. Uh, uh don't give you so many confidence <laughs> when you no. are the teams coming back uh in the game and uh after we just lost the control of the game but it was a a really sad day i think for everyone yeah. because we have we've done everything to to achieve the 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 final you say there about um, almost like dropping a bit deeper, playing a low, lower block when when the score was at two one. Is that almost instructions from the sideline, or is that just something that naturally happens, Remain? No, no, I think it's naturally happened. Yeah. I think uh, was not from the the coach or the staff. Yeah. Um, we know that maybe they will put more 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 long ball, this kind of thing, just to to stress um to stress us and because also they didn't find the solution before so they tried different uh different things but after you can deal with this kind of football but you have to be more in control like when you have the ball try to keep it because they just they want to put more pressure on on us but uh, in the same time if we when we uh, have the ball we just kick it in front they will kick it back in the Mm. in our box and it's just until we we do a mistake and that's what happened uh so i think we we should have more control when we we cover the ball and try to to keep more the ball uh even if you don't go to to score and try to kill the game because 
um, it was just a couple of minutes to to play uh, so be more clever and have more experience also because uh, you have to think also we we were a young a young team we have a lot of young player at that time uh, jota um, Ruben, we're all the um, young young player. Even me, if I was old, if I was older, it was my first semi final of a of big competition. So yeah. mm -hmm. you have to deal with all this kind of thing, and uh, it's a regret for everyone, I think so, because we mm -hmm. we should go in the final, uh, but we lost the game for some details. Yeah. Uh it, well, the, the the rest of the season we did okay. We finished seventh, as you know, uh, because Watford didn't win in the FA Cup final. Wolves got Europa mm -hmm. League, which was a huge, huge achievement for us as a as a football club as well. Um, and you were talking about having like a long season that that sort of year. The season after as well, you played just under fifty games in total just for Wolves that year. It was a long year. Obviously, with COVID as well, we had the, a long break in the season. Mm -hmm. um, but Wolves before COVID started off really, really well. And we were still in the conversation to possibly be in the, you know, a Champions League team, maybe even, you know, because we were playing that well, uh, even in the Europa League as well. Do you think the, the break in the season killed the momentum for Wolves? Because obviously it was a long time without playing. We returned in the summer. And to be fair, being honest, Wolves struggled after the, the restart. Um, do you think without that break in the season, Wolves would have finished much better? For me, I think so, yeah. Because mm. uh, I think in that time it was uh, how you can deal uh, playing without fun, you yeah. know, in this new un environment. And uh, I think for us, our fun was a huge help all the time. Of course. Especially yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. And you can see in that time, you have more wind uh, away than than at home, yeah. so everything was possible. And um, when COVID happened, I think we were in really good moment, mm -hmm. and uh, we knew with the last uh, after last nine what was last nine games. Yeah, yeah, last nine games we can achieve something uh, really good. Uh, you were talking about Champions League uh, could be the Europa League also, but uh, it was a really strange moment course, to yeah. play for everyone without fun. Uh, it doesn't look like football, you know. Mm. Uh, but even on the result, you can see it. You have so many surprises at that yeah. moment. Um, yeah, it was totally different. It looks like if you go to like a friendly game, you know. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah, not yeah. looking with football, so you have to... And we are working on on that, like um, try to find an extra motivation uh, to don't be too relaxed, like because the fans was not here to to give you this huge boost in the in the game. So it was some kind of thing we are working on on it. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, so we finished seventh. Was a <laughs> A good, uh, still a good season. Uh, a good, yeah, it's still a good season. But you can have some regret because nine games before you were in position to fight for Champions League, for example. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think if you keep playing with fans until the end, and we don't stop the uh, the league, I think we will achieve something really good. Mm -hmm. The, the it, season after was a was was a disappointing one for. I think every game was behind closed doors, wasn't it? Apart yeah. from um, apart from the last game of the season yeah. with limited crowds. Yeah. What what happened that season, Romain? It was obviously Nuno's last season. Was it was it a difficult season for everyone behind the scenes? Yeah, it was hard because now you have to play thirty eight games behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not only nine. Mm. Uh, we lost Raúl. Mm -hmm. You can say anything, but it was hard without him uh, up front. And uh, it's not to point, uh, for example, Fabio, but um, it was hard for him also yeah. to, OK, now it's your time. You have to replace Raul. Yeah. Uh, he was 18 years old, coming from Portugal. 
he didn't have time to adapt himself to the the league all these kind of things and he has a lot of pressure mm. on him because he has to replace our our striker and that at that time he was one of the best in the league uh, sure. so it was it was difficult for um for uh, for fabio and even mm-hmm. for us because in was the first season or we had a lot of injury yeah in that time uh so it was really difficult because we had a really short and small squad i remember i played some games left back i never had in my life i will play in the Premier Ryan, you scored as a left a- back you sc- it was disallowed, but the goal against Leeds when you were left back was unbelievable. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I I keep wa- I I keep watching him on on, on YouTube. <laughs> what a goal! <laughs> yeah, it was good. I don't know how Podence can be offside. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, yeah, so it was difficult because you have to. We deal with so many things this season, with mm-hmm. injury. What happened to Raul? The COVID uh, was so so difficult, and I think the the teams who deal with all this kind of thing were the best team this season because mm. uh, you were not talking about football. You can prepare uh, each game uh, every week, and the, the day before you have two or three players out because they have COVID, so you have to change everything. And when you don't have the a big squad, and you had uh, the COVID plus the injury, mm. was so hard. Yeah, honestly, it was so hard. That season, obviously, Nuno was uh, let left the club. Were, were you shocked when that happened? Um, do you feel like it, the change was needed? Well, it was a shock, yeah, because it happened uh, the last week. Yeah, the last week of the season, and uh, he was talking a few days before about new season, uh, about the plan for the new season, and he came like Wednesday or Thursday to sp- in the dressing room, and he told us like it's gonna be my last game, so we are shocking. What happened? <laughs> yeah. How it's possible? Mm. So it just happened like uh, yeah in in two days and he said like it's going to be my my last uh, my last uh, game for the club and he's going to leave so it was it was a shock for for everyone yeah um i think uh for him also but i'm not sure he was expecting to to leave the club uh because he had some uh Great moment at the club, and I think the fans they were in love mm. with him, mm. and it's normal because uh, he did some amazing things for for the club. But yes, it was a, a shock for everyone. I think. Yeah, we spoke to John Ruddy about this, and, and and he said the same. It was a bit of a shock. Did did you feel, and did the players feel that, although it was a shock, that a, a change was needed? Because I know that Nuno had been there for four years. That season, there's a lot of problems with injuries and COVID. Do you feel like that change was was needed for you guys? Uh, honestly, uh, you 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 have so many questions uh, in your head, in your mind at the time at that time because about the situation uh, in the in the world, about the COVID, mm. about the the injury we we had during the 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 season you have so many questions about so imagine if we have more players uh, imagine uh, if we change the coach if we have another coach maybe it's going to be better or if you just have few more players more it's going to be a better season you know you have so many questions and you don't you just don't have the answer and after that you just have to to take some uh, some de- decision um, because uh, it was it was quite hard the uh, end of the season for him to be honest mm-hmm. you can could see him on the on the pitch on training um, it was really affected I think but the the situation because 
he knows what what we can do and uh, when you have so many problem week after week you know you lost maybe you lost also maybe a bit of confidence uh, about uh, him and his work and uh, he try in the same time doing things like sometimes playing with a back four yeah. uh, come back to the back five i think he tried to to find the solution but uh it was hard for 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 him and i we 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 can felt we felt it at the, at that mm-hmm. time like it was a hard moment for him and even for us because after it's, it was us on the pitch and eh? it's not uh, you can do all the tactic you want uh, it's the player who play football it's not the coach or a staff so it was really tough at that time to have this this kind of season and everyone was i think was looking for the end of the season and to refresh yeah uh, their mind uh, before to start to uh, start the new one and we knew it was would be different with fans back to the normal yeah. football so it was a huge boost for for everyone and uh, yeah when when the when it happened and we he told us like I'm going to leave the club. It was a huge shock for, for everyone. Yeah, and, and Bruno Large replaced um, Nuno the season after. What what differences do they have as, as managers and their approach? But when we spoke to John, uh, John Ruddy, he said that Bruno tactically is, is, is a very, very good coach, but maybe lacked uh, man management skills. Is, is that something that you would echo? And how different was he to Nuno? Yeah, it was really, it's really inter- interesting for about tactic, uh, but football generally. So we we did a lot of meeting, a lot of uh, videos, this kind of thing to about our games, about the opponent, and uh, I think uh, working with the the video especially is good mm-hmm. to see what what you what you do good and what you do wrong on the pitch mm. um even the training was putting on on the screen in the on tv on the dressing room uh, of our session what we what we did on the on during the week to give us confidence for the for the weekend so yeah it was it was it was a uh, it was totally different on that time um but uh yes you know he was pretty sure about what he wants to do each game. He was keep keeping his main identity for every game mm-hmm, and just adapt a couple of things for about uh, the opponent. Of course, you're not going to play uh, in the same way if you play against City or a team bottom of the, of the league. Uh, because, you know, against City, you're not going to have the ball a lot, a lot of time, <laughs> yeah. for example. Um, but yeah, it was two two different uh, two different character as well. Uh, and I think the fact uh, he came also uh, Bruno was uh, like looking a new a new fresh fresh air to the to the club to the to the team. And uh, I think everyone was looking forward to to work with him um, because he has a, um, an identity was a bit different than Nuno was more uh, with the pole about uh, more offensively even if we were struggle to to score goals but how we can create <laughs> some chances. Uh, yeah. how can we can we score goals cre- create space uh, in in the opponent team and in same time us uh, the the defender we are working a lot uh, the back line together uh, all the defender so yeah it was different but two vision of football you you learn a, a lot and uh, i think if he had more more time and the players he wants, um, Bruno. He, he, we do 
a great job at Wolves, but fortunately they take another unfortunately they take another decision. But after it's yeah. football, you need some results. So yeah, we'll t- we'll talk about that uh, the situation at Wolves in a second. But what do you think happened last season, Romain? Because Wolves <laughs> started off really well. Um, I mean, I remember one game that you, you scored the winner in against Brighton uh, around yeah. Christmas time last year, which I went mm-hmm. a long journey, but it was mm-hmm. worth it. <laughs> uh, Bruno even called you the Moroccan Maldini after that game mm-hmm. when, <laughs> when you had won. Um, but we were doing well. We were flying high, and, and once again, people were talking about Wolves maybe qualifying for Europe again. And then there was probably the game after the loss against Arsenal, and maybe the loss against Leeds when Raúl got sent off, and the form just dipped. What happened there? Do you think it was a little bit like the Watford game where the confidence was was just hit, and you just didn't know how to to get back back to it? Yeah, I think we so we start we start uh, the season. Uh... I think pretty good in terms yeah. of the way the, the way we want to play. Mm-hmm. Of course, the results they were not here because we lost uh, the first uh, three games of the season. But I think uh, we dominated um, the the three these three games, and uh, we knew we will get more points in the in the future. Yeah, um, and we just keep working the same way for all the season, and after second part of the the season was more was more difficult um yeah. because also we had we had quite a uh, injury uh, do you think they should have signed more players in that january remain um because i think marcel said it in the press that that instead I, of relying so much on you i don't players, i don't i don't i don't uh, i don't know more if it was more to sign more players but the problem is uh, you lost uh, Adama, mm-hmm, of for course, example. Yeah. Uh, so Adama, I honestly, uh, I know uh, sometimes people uh, they they are not happy with him because they are <laughs> expecting more from him. Of course, uh, I can understand because he has uh, a huge talent. Uh, but the pro- the fact of Adama, it's when you have in in the team on the bench or even on the first 11 trust me he gave a lot of fear to the opponent mm. doesn't matter if sure. he's going to play good or bad they're going to think about him because they know him on one action in five seconds it didn't change everything Bang. you know yeah, yeah yeah and you lost you lost adama you have uh raul who came back from his injury it was difficult uh i think we have we had a bit of lake of experience also mm. mm-hmm. the team was really young last season you have a really young team uh, a lot of kids uh, if i can say kids but when you have some yeah. uh, important player um, and he's got uh, injury or I don't know yellow card suspension red card and you have uh, only kids to replace him after and most of the time they didn't play for for a long time uh, and yeah. it was it was difficult uh, and the the coach he was expecting to i think to to brought more more players with more experience uh, sure. uh, during the during the season and maybe before also um, because it's the Premier League is difficult and especially mm. when you are coming from abroad, you have a different culture, um, different language sometimes, so it's difficult. And when you are um, a young player, uh, it can be difficult. Uh, after all of them, they have they are good player. Uh, they have they are top top person also, uh, but they need time to to be ready and to be more. Um, to become really important in the team and in the club, you know, it's difficult when you come and we put you on the pitch and you have to show now, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's I think, the what we missed also at that time. Mm. It's more, maybe more player, but with more, more experience. Yeah, I, th- I think, I think you're right. And, you know, there were a couple of games that I mentioned there, which, 
sort of fans pinpoint, you know, if we if we had beaten Leeds, if Raul didn't get sent off, I think it was a, a very mm. harsh red card. You know, things could have been so different. But we had our, the, the final game of the season at the end of May. Uh, the club announced on the 31st of May that you were going to be leaving the club. Mm. What was the situation regarding the contract? Were you open to signing a new deal? Did you want a new challenge? When did you, or, you know, what was the situation regarding that? The first of all, the... The season before, uh, I was talking with the the club because uh, uh, I had I was end of the con end of contract yeah, yeah. but I had one year extension mm -hmm. yeah and, and uh, I was talking with the club about it and talking about a new new contract mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, we didn't find uh, an agreement and i think they take the security to extend my my contract yeah just in case of, they need me i think yeah <laughs> we'll say yeah. like this yeah uh, and uh, i was even looking me to to left the club because uh, i was a bit uh, pissed off with the with the ball because uh Every time we talk about contract, it was always difficult. Mm, yeah. It was always, uh, you know, I know negotiation is, is uh, everything is, is fighting for this side, so I can yeah. understand, yeah. but you have a minimum, especially after five years in the club. Of course. Uh, I think I almost played uh, every season, <laughs> every game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was a bit frustrated and I said, okay, no problem. Uh, so I stay, and in my mind it was okay. Let's see. I have one more year now. He's a new coach, and yeah. uh, we see what what's going on. Uh, so I really enjoyed the first uh, first six months, even the end of the the, the second part, even if it was uh, more difficult. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with the the manager um, in the second part of the season uh in his in his office and he told me like uh uh what what i'm thinking for the future if i'm open to to stay or i'm thinking about leaving the club mm -hmm. uh, i said to him like uh, because he knew i spoke with him he knew the problem i had before yeah yeah and um, he told me like uh, if you are open i would like you to stay and for the future because i'm really happy with you mm -hmm. uh, you're important for me in, even in the dressing room um, and i said to him look me um, i'm happy here because i'm here for six years now so my family is happy uh, my kids uh, i have one of my kids he knows only words on his life <laughs> yeah <laughs> just born yeah. in france and moved to Fr to to england mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so i have you know uh it was it was home for me you know it was, yeah. it was mm -hmm. home for me and i was open to stay uh many years you know uh, yeah. and i said to him like uh, but you know how it's going when you talk about contract <laughs> so, yeah. uh, i can do it i will do it for you because i enjoy playing uh with you and that team I, because i really feel good on here and with the my teammates as well and even mm -hmm. the staff all the people working for the club they are just amazing you know you feel mm -hmm. really like um, in, in family you know i have yeah. my mm -hmm. family at home and i but i have another family, family in, football, in my yeah. club and uh i said okay uh we gonna um, he said, "Okay, I'm gonna speak with the the club like you are open because we talk about it, and uh, when after you're gonna discuss, but uh, I will be behind you because I want mm -hmm. you to to stay for the Sorry. future." Yeah. And after when I've got the offer from the club, I just feel like uh, so fucking disrespect because oh, between wow. what the coach told me and what uh, they want to give me uh, it was 
just disrespectful for me. And I'm not talking about numbers, you know, I'm not talking yeah. about money. But when uh, I arrived, I was doing a good season. Mm -hmm. uh, I played so many positions in this, this club. Mm -hmm. I, I was there for five years. Uh, no, six years was my sixth season. Uh, I think I have, I have, I have achieved some good things with this club. So uh, I was expecting more, more respect from 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 them. But when you come and you give me only one year contract, uh, uh, mm -hmm. for me I said okay, uh, understand. I prefer. And that time you told me like uh, okay. You are not our priority for next season uh, because maybe you want to move forward, bring maybe more a younger player. So but just let me know. Huh? You know, I'm not gonna cry. Huh? <laughs> I have been, <laughs> honest. No, but, honesty. Yeah, just honesty because uh, I know football how it is. You know, but just have a bit of respect for what I've done yeah. for this club because I always be respectful for for the club. For the opportunity they gave me, the club gave me, but doing that was for me was was not respectful and it helped me a lot. And um, mentally, it was hard to to finish the the season or so because I went until the end of the season because I had the coach. I talked to the coach a few times and uh, he was not happy as well. Yeah because uh he want me to stay and i say he said please don't take a decision uh we speak we with them one more time and it happened a few times uh during the, the second part of the season until the last game at liverpool and they told me that they don't they don't they don't want to to listen what i want you know I, um, so after you know when about the numbers is just a negotiation because you know more or less each player what they yeah, what they <laughs> they've yeah. got in your position uh, or this kind of thing so you are not stupid you know but uh, mm. it's just after it's just a negotiation but when you start the negotiation just with one year contract mm. what can i say if i'm if I am the same place as Joao, for example, I can understand because you are a yeah. bit older. But I was, I'm 32 years old. I was playing all the time. I uh, didn't get so many injury every season. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it just helped me one more time. And uh, I was really upset with them because they give me like shit excuses all the time. Mm. Uh, talking about you know i can as i said about uh, paul lambert just be honest yeah mm. you don't want because you want to move forward like you want to bring i don't know which player you want sergio ramos or <laughs> anyone younger mm. as you want but yeah. at least you've been honest with me and you respect what i've done to the club yeah and don't let me like this like it's for me it looked like um uh, they give me this for me to refuse mm. and to say, oh, we proposed to him we something yeah, that he yeah, refused. Yeah, yeah. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, I know. Uh, yeah. So they don't look and, like the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, I was not like this, but just being honest with me, but uh, they didn't... When did they, they offer you it. that... When did they offer you that first contract, Romain? Was that quite late or was that maybe like February, March? Or was it later than that? The first uh, time they offered you? Yeah, it was uh, around around that time. Yeah, March something mm. like this. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I just said like, uh, why, mm. why? You know, it's one unfair. more time. Mm. Every yeah, time it was, it was every time it was uh, difficult um, about negotiation with the the club uh, for so many 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 reasons uh one time it's because i was not playing so much okay understand i signed a new contract no problem i will do mm -hmm. my best but after when i was playing more and they want to extend my contract there's another excuses you know i can't hear anything but don't lie to me yeah you know mm -hmm. yeah uh, you cannot come and talk to me about 
you know, it's COVID, it's difficult. But is that me who bought yeah. for 70 million of players during COVID? <laughs> yeah, so it's... come on. I thought that's why I thought to to I spoke with Scott Seller about mm. about this and say just be honest sometimes. Don't tell me any bullshit about this, about COVID. Uh, just be honest. Sometimes you have to be honest. You don't mm. want. Okay, we move on. As uh, mm. John said uh, about him, because for me it was the the same for him. The lack of honesty yeah. and a disrespect about what he done, he's done for the club. But after that, and but I don't want to the people to think like I'm. I blame the club. No, no. because no, I have so don't. many. No, I understand. I have so I have so many memories to that club with everyone. All the the people, even the the chef at the canteen. So everyone, the cleaner, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone. But the way they dealt the with board, it. Yeah. Mm. Nah, I, I've been there for six years. I never had five minutes of chat with the president, for example. So never. who even who, about my contract? Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Who 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 heads up the negotiation for contracts? Is it Scott Sellers and Jeff Shee? Yeah, honestly, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But that for Just me, living. that makes me think. I, I obviously Bruno is a head coach, and but for and I understand the chairman or the technical director must have a say. Yeah. But if Bruno wants you to stay, surely they're going to make the effort to to make you stay, not just piss you off with a, a crap. No, contract. but it's it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not only about me. But yeah, at one point you have to listen your coach. Yeah, 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 and if he needs some player and he likes this kind of player, you have yeah, to yeah. help yeah. him on that way. Yeah, how can you be coach if you only the I don't know president or the uh, director bring the the players and you don't know mm -hmm. what happened and yeah. they give you player and do what you want. Mm -hmm. The the coach needs to bring his own player. He needs to be uh, uh, agree at one mm -hmm. point. And that's yeah. what the problem. And uh, honestly, uh, to be honest, I have respect for everyone at the club uh, because they give me a lot of a lot of things in my life. But I think Wolves, we are the only club in the world without a sportive director. <laughs> <laughs> and we are talking now. Yeah. We are talking yeah. about the club in the Premier League. So at one point, you have to be. You know, honest with everyone. Uh, exactly what we think as well. This is not just no, you. But, uh, exactly what we think. It's not. It's not normal because it's the job of this of this uh, person to get players to speak with agents, this kind of things, and to have also good relationship with the the coach in terms yeah. of recruitment. And since uh, Kevin Tewell left the club, we don't have anyone. Yeah. So, do you, think that, do you think that maybe Scott Sellers was promoted to obviously to work with, under Jeff Shee because it was it was easy for the club to do that because perhaps they knew that I think he would be a bit of a, a yes man just because if Jeff says jumpy would say how high maybe I don't know that that's uh, what us fans think that's that's what we feel. I don't know. I don't know honestly. Um, I really don't know. Uh, I think is someone important also at the club. Yeah, he did some great things on the pitch as a coach. Yeah, uh, and I think he deserved to have a, um, a place in the club also. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, I don't know if he has any power in the club. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who take the decision because in my case it was the president to take the decision. Uh, for example. Uh, so, and uh, I had few conversations with him also. Like uh, he was, he was happy with me, and uh, uh, he was looking forward maybe for me to stay also. But after, uh, he's not the main boss. You know yeah. what I mean. So <laughs> you can do whatever you want if someone up to you don't want. Yeah. Just don't care, you know. But uh, yeah. it was hard, a really hard end 
for me, honestly. Um, it helped me a lot. Even the end of the season was really hard mentally because uh, you feel fucked, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yes, it's, it's true. You feel fucked yeah. because you have the feeling you gave everything for the club, but you didn't get uh, something back after, you know? Mm. Uh, so, but I've learned a lot about the situation, but uh, as I said, it hurt me a lot because I consider Wolves like my club and my my family. Yes. Even today, and keep watching the boys every game. Mm. I didn't miss. So I didn't miss one game because it's my club. Mm. And um, yeah, it was a sad hand for for me when I left. It was really really hard. That's, I've always sort of tried to back up the the board at the club, but this year has just shown for me just how bad almost the club has been run, and it always makes from what you've said, Romain. Obviously, Bruno Large is sacked as you mentioned earlier. Well, they have not replaced him. They're not going to replace him until next year. That just shows to me they don't have a <laughs> have a clue almost what they're doing. Are you were you surprised that Bruno was sacked so soon, or especially with no plan in place to bring anybody in? Uh, surprised to sack him. Uh, I don't know because mm. unfortunately he didn't get results. a good results, and uh, the team were was hard for the team to score goals, all these kind of things. But one more time, I don't know if he play with the players he wants. Um, so that's the first question and uh, first after for the for the for the new coach um, I'm not surprised they didn't get uh, any coach because I think all the people they know uh, know now uh, it's difficult at all the Difference, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a shit job, but uh, uh, it, it, it's difficult. You know, it's yeah. everyone knows. Uh, people they are talking about the influence of Mendes. George Mendes, for yeah. example. So, you know, as an agent, for example, how can you place, for example, uh, a player in this club? And if you think that the you have one agent who has maybe three quarter of the team, yeah, you know, and you it problem? can be it, it could it could it could be the same for the for the manager. Yeah. So all the manager who have been at Wolves and the last uh, five six years, they were from the same same agent, you know. So do you think another one will come and he has to deal with everything? So yeah. I can understand people ask they have some question about about it. Uh, so what after mm. he, 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 uh, you we have to be honest, he brought uh, a fucking good player in that club <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who have the 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 club so you cannot blame blame the the club to to do that and to work with him because he's one of the best in, in his job mm -hmm. but in the same time you have to understand the other people uh who they are not from the, the same agent if they want to go there and walk you know mm -hmm. because today you have from what i i read you have one uh, coach lopetegui declined the proposition and you want right. one coach from QPR, Michael Beal, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah QPR from champion from championship. <laughs> no, but uh, you have to ask them why they refuse. Yeah, mm. I, we, I I said this. I I said if you're a young progressive coach in championship and a top ten Premier League club coming for you, you you're rubbing your hands together. But then you're told that you may be only able to sign players from this agency and you can only have these kind of players. It's They've almost got one hand tied behind the back before they even start. It's a difficult job. Yeah, that's mm. why. So, yeah. And even if you think you do, you go there, you don't have one sportive director. Yeah. How, how, how can you walk? 
probably well, the, jo the job interview is being done by scott sellers and jeff she with your experience not many managers are going to be uh, be looking forward to the job no i'm just i'm just, just I'm, I'm i'm just honest i cannot say no? like uh, you know people they will say maybe oh he's not happy because they were not good with him so now he want to kill the club no 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 i have yeah, no yeah. point to, to kill the cl club i'm just give my feeling because i was there yeah mm -hmm. so i saw yeah. these kind of things and uh yeah. and sometime with some decision the club took we were not uh all the time uh agree you know Correct. Uh, yeah, as a yeah. player uh and if i if i said something today just because as i said for me it's still my club yeah, yeah mm -hmm. uh, say i want to, the best for this for for this club and to see the club and the boys in that position it's it, it's really difficult mm -hmm. uh so when it's good you have to say it's good but when it's bad you have to to point the the problem that's i'm trying to to do uh, but yeah. uh yeah mm -hmm. something's going wrong you know mm -hmm. it's, it's for sure because mm -hmm. uh it look like uh, we are losing the identity of the club you know being a park being together this kind of things yeah uh, you know mm. you lost how many not big player how many character you lost this season oh, john connor cody yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i'm not talking about players i'm talking just about character about what the players mean for the club for mm -hmm. for the fans you know you can move on from the players but you cannot you cannot forget the identity of the club you still have some players that are here for uh for for many years in the club like ruben mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. now joao um mm -hmm. raul this kind of player but you lost so many in one in one transfer window and yeah. only experienced player you know what i mean so mm -hmm. i think to it's you have to keep this identity to inside the club yeah. and just go step by step you know what yeah. i mean you lost mm -hmm. your captain one week before the <laughs> beginning of the yeah. season mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It, things need to change at Wolves. I think we, you know, and the things need to improve for sure. But I, I think you, you're correct there in terms of characters, leaders, even like someone like John, who, as fans, we know he wasn't going to play a lot, but he's in yeah, the dressing but room. Yeah, trust me, it was one most of the one of the most important the players in the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he knows his job. I think he mm -hmm. was he was pushing Rui Patricio, mm -hmm. Jose Sa, because. Mm -hmm they know he, he 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 was ready to play because he was a top, a top goalkeeper but it was really important in the dressing room on all the decision uh for the team uh so he was he was he was one of the uh, captain even mm -hmm. if uh, if he was not playing he was so mm -hmm. he was he has the same importance as maybe Connor or Ruben or or me or whatever whoever you want mm -hmm. and um when you lose this kind of things is this kind of player it's a huge difference for mm -hmm. for the for the team of course after because uh in terms of mentality i'm not talking about uh skills this kind of things uh, in terms of football but in terms of uh leaders leadership in the in the in the in the squad you lost uh, quite a lot yeah yeah well remain i really do appreciate your time you've been fantastic we've learned a lot about your time at wolves a wolves legend no problem obviously, wish you all the best for the rest of the season uh, thank with you Bishiktas and obviously the world cup with morocco as well but thank you for thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you. Remain, really pleasure. appreciate it mate bye bye